And Ubisoft also. Ubisoft? Ubi, Ubisoft, I always, Ubisoft. I always read it as Ubisoft. Is that wrong? Ubi, Ubi, no, it's kind Another of like Square, Square Enix. Square Come on, Enix. guys, make your names clear to pronounce. That's why they're not as big as Nintendo. Everyone yeah. knows how to say Nintendo. Ubisoft, so, um, okay. Ubisoft, they spent a lot of time on things that they shouldn't have spent time on. Like, that, like that's kind of like my sum up. Yeah, first of all, they opened it up with, with the heavy hitter, the heaviest, right? The, the biggest, the title one I have. that no one knew that they were working yeah. on. We were we were on the edge of our seats. Their annual seminal one. series, yeah. Just Dance 2019, which I heard was even going to be on the Wii. <laughs> like I'm like no, not Wii U, the Wii also. I mean, it could like be, there's honestly, 2018 was on all three. It was on Wii, Wii U, and Switch. Do people are people still buying and playing these? They must because they wouldn't keep making these. And the games. music on them on them is garbage too. Yeah. There, I mean, it's no replacement for DDR in my opinion. But yeah, they they spent like a good almost ten minutes on a dance number that they opened the conference up with, and it was dumb. Ooh. We all know that you make it. It's not. Go ahead, bring the game to E3, but you should not have dedicated any amount of time to this. Just say, Ubisoft by the way, uh, just Dance 19, y'all. At the very end, right. mind you. Um, yeah. Wait, so it's like a motion control, motion capture thing, right? Because like DDR, that's like the pads. Yeah. You have the pad that you step on. This one, it doesn't have any of that, right? It's just like text where you move. I guess so, and I don't know how it does that unless you have a Kinect. Like, that's the only Just Dance I've ever played is one that used the Kinect. Yeah. So it's it's weird, but that's fine. If you like it, that's great. You get you're gonna get another one. Y'all y- y'all be y'all be happy about that, I guess. Next on the docket was a long portion of the conference that mm. dealt with Beyond Good and Evil Two. Um, this so it's great and what's worse than evil? Great and there's not some worst maybe evil. Great and evil is best and, and worst. How we call it that? <laughs> so no, beyond good and evil. What is what, this? It was a, tell me. So it was a sleeper hit. It was on the PS2 and maybe Xbox. What was it about? Um, I don't know. Oh, okay. it's sci-fi it takes place in space. I think. Also, I'll, I'm finding out a lot about it just watching this trailer. Okay, the name made me think it was like something having to do with like demons fighting. No, people or something. it's sci-fi. Hmm. It, it's a female protagonist. I forget her name. I'm sorry, I haven't played. Is it, it. Samus? No. Um, she's got green lips. Weird. That's all I know. Or maybe it's just lipstick. Um, there's a pig in it who's a cook. Okay. Right. There's a monkey who runs a space station. Okay, I'm I looking think. this up. Um, it's it's crazy. It is really really crazy. Just make sure you don't get the audio on there. Yeah. Um, and if hey you were a fan of the first game like this would really get me hyped for this second game that they've been working on for a little while so Ooh, when did the, what did the first one come out on PS2 yeah th- that looks way outdated yeah and this one looks crazy new crazy new yeah um next they had some out someone come out and call, uh, talk about Rainbow Six Siege which oh yeah I've heard of that yeah it's really popular your brother-in-law is obsessed with that game or used to be huh he used to tell me like all about how much he would play it oh Josh yeah yeah uh, I guess they're making more content for that and that, I guess that was a game that came out it's kind of like a No Man's Sky situation where it came out and it wasn't that good and then they kept working on it and working on it and working on it till it was a good game and now it's it's pretty popular on Twitch and now there's a new Trials game sorry gosh Trials so I just like watching people play it I don't actually play it oh really yeah I don't play it either, um, but it did involve, I guess, one of the developers. He he came down. He's he's a large man, and I'm sorry, I couldn't help but get the image of he wasn't riding like a motorbike down the aisle. It looked more like a tricycle that he was on, and he just kind of lets it lets it fall, and he's like in full like uh, stunt man, you know, uh, almost like evil Knievel style clothing with a with a helmet and he like pretends to fall into a podium and break it and then he gets up and he's got a really european accent and he's talking about how he's re- he's like so and so president of this company that makes trials or blah 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 they spend way too much time on a game that's really a two-dimensional bike riding simulator 
The graphics, though, it looks so much better than Trials Fusion. Okay. I See, and I, I know so little about Trials that I thought this was the second game. And apparently no, the there's been a bunch. A third or maybe fourth. Because, yeah. They look like mobile games to me. The last... This one looks... This one looks way better than the last one. But it's still two-dimensional. Yeah. It is. The the most fun I had watching this part of the conference was I like the ragdoll physics. I'm always a fan of ragdoll physics. You can like launch off your bike and stuff. Yeah, and you're just like, oh, your guys oh, it's, just like it's two dimensional, but also like your track it doesn't just go straight. Like, yeah, there's a depth of and stuff. There's depth of field with it. Yeah, because and because you, you can do multiplayer and they're like behind you. And yeah, stuff. yeah. So that part's that's I think it looks okay. Fun. That's fine. I just. I just feel like they spent way too much time, especially with with him like riding down on a bike. It, a lot of just, people like those games, though. Yeah. Next, we had the Division Two, which looks a lot like the Division One, except you're not in New York City; you're in Washington D.C. They had a really big cinematic trailer. They did say that they were going to do a lot of free content for the game, like they were doing like episodes one, two, and three, and apparently, like those are going to be free for anyone who played the game. So that was, hey, free stuff. That's good, right? Yes. Um, next you had Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle Donkey Kong Adventure. <laughs> I looked at this and I was just like... What? So you, you've known about this game though, right? I, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Are people still playing... Do people still care about the Rabbids thing? They haven't cared... They haven't been relevant for a long time until this came back around and then people gave it a shot and they were like, hey, this is actually a pretty solid... XCOM style uh, tactical RPG of sorts. Mm. So that's fine if that's your jam. Uh, this is. Uh, there were a lot of things that happened at E3 this title. that were DLC. Like this is just DLC expansion for the game. That's okay, it. yeah, it's been around for like a year. Or it, two. it came out about a year ago. Yeah. This title is way too long. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle Donkey. Kong See, I couldn't even... Okay. Donkey Kong Adventure. It's like, why? Well, Donkey Kong Adventure is the name of the DLC, but... Oh, oh, okay. And, so it's just... Okay. And in the conference, they they played like... They had like a an instrumental music, live music part about it. It wasn't necessary. It's just DLC for the game. Why are you giving so much attention to just DLC? But I digress. Yeah. Next on the list was Skull and Bones. So... This is basically the sequel to Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. <laughs> really? Is it like, oh, so it's like a pirate thing, Skull and Bones. It, yeah, it's a pirate thing. It's kind of like a pirate simulator. This is an which, original, though, IP? Like an yeah, IP. original IP. Um, where you play, it It kind of looks like everything people wanted in a, what's that pirate game on Xbox? Yeah. Was it something C, no... I almost want to say No Man's Sea, but I know that it's not. It wasn't a... Wasn't, not, oh, goodness. I don't know. Goodness, I... You gotta look I it up? I gotta look it up now. Uh, pirate game for Xbox. Xbox. Sea of Thieves. Oh, see, I haven't heard of that. Sea of Thieves. So this looks like it'll it'll be much better. If you, if you want to play a pirate game, play Sea of Thieves, and it doesn't look like it's going to be console exclusive, so you could probably play it on any platform that you have um it looked cool like i said it looked a lot like they took elements from assassin's creed that have the ship combat and naval combat mechanics but just really refined really well done i think it looks cool um next they talked about transference where elijah wood came on stage and and talked about it's it's a VR horror game. That's really all you need. Why did to know Elijah about. Wood talk about? It? Is he in it? Apparently, his company is involved in it. Like he has a company that does film and small projects, and like there will be actors in it. It won't just be gameplay. It'll be like live action segments too. Of it's a VR actors. horror game. VR horror. I need game. a good VR horror game. I'm go. Well, this is irrelevant. But I'm gonna play a game on the uh, on the Oculus soon, and I want to play a horror game. Do you know of any? An Oculus? Yeah, like on Steam. Like yeah, a VR horror Resident game. Resident Evil 7. Like a smaller one. Oh, a smaller one. Oh, that would be ter... Oh, my God. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not messing with that. I'm too familiar with that. Uh, so I'm going to have to do research, because I've, I've been trying to think of one, but I can't. 
I'm gonna have to look it up. But. Yeah, there's quite a few. I mean, look up Markiplier's channel on YouTube. That's true. I mean, <laughs> any he's Oculus got, he's video. He's got several of them. <laughs> uh, so what's what's Transference about? It's weird. It's like a family with like a deranged husband, and Ooh. he's like putting his family into these like. It looks like experiments or something like psych, psycho, psychological experimentation. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a thing. Uh, next we have Starlink, which is not related to the Legend of Zelda in any way. No, it's not yeah. the Legend of Zelda in space. <laughs> no, no, that would be awesome though. Side note: Breath of the Wild almost had invading uh, aliens. Well, how do you know? Because I've seen the developers presentation on they're like hey we almost had ufos randomly pop that out of the sky fit. fine i think well ufos no. are in majora's mask what if really mm -hmm. what if um you can see it with the telescope no they uh start stealing cows from the romani ranch oh um what if um the, sh the sheik people you know how they have like all those oh, ancient the buildings what if they were aliens that they, they were actually here, aliens that would, would be cool ago. yeah that would fit anyway this is not that <laughs> yeah, game not that but we just we came up with a writing on, good writing that. Yeah. You know, hey Nintendo, take it for free. <laughs> Starlink. Uh, Starlink. So <sighs> this is this looks like a pretty okay game, with the exception of it's a toys to life game, where you have to have toys to have like more Sky, things. Sky, Sky, Skylanders and Disney Infinity. Where are those franchises now? They're gone, Nathan. I Don't even see. bother looking for them. <laughs> <laughs> They're gone. And you can't even point to, well, Amiibo was still going strong. Amiibo is not an entire game. Yeah. Amiibo are, number one, it's Nintendo branding. Right. So it's going to sell no matter what it does. If they were just figurines that did mm -hmm. nothing in a game, mm -hmm. people would buy them. Because they're super collectible. So Amiibo are not toys to life. They just unlock, they, they're like DLC in disguise, if you want to think of them that way. Um... So Starlink is based. It looks like it is. You, you're gonna have to have the toys to play as different characters. It's a. It's a. It looks like a very kid friendly, um, science fiction. Oh, it's a Star thing. Fox game. Well, no, but Star Fox is appearing in it, and only the Nintendo Switch version of the game. You, oh. I think you have to buy the toy, the Star Fox toy, to get Star Fox in the game. Uh -huh. But. Okay, I do want to talk about that, because at this point, there were so many things that I wasn't interested in in, in the Ubisoft uh, press conference leading up to this point. And then they were talking about this, and I remember in the conference, the guy saying, you know, and the team will need all the help they can get. Then they played this trailer with, like, someone who's, you know, flying a spaceship saying, oh, okay, I need, I need help. And there's all this, like, garbage, and, or garbage, I mean, radio garble coming in over her... Mm -hmm communications and I remember not really paying attention to it and out of the corner of my ear I heard this little like <laughs> which is a sound effect from the original Star Fox game and I just thought I, I thought kind of absentmindedly I'm like wow that sounds a lot like a Star Fox uh, sound effect and then you started hearing more of them and I'm like oh they're, they're having Star Fox in this game and sure enough they are so I thought the reveal was done really well. I feel like if you're going to have something cool in your game that, that it's going to be a secret to reveal, this is how you do it. Now, is Star Fox an original Ubisoft title? No, it's Nintendo. Yeah, that's what I thought. But since they did Mario plus Rabbids, right. like, they're, they're, they're like they have the a buttons. good relationship yeah. with Nintendo. Also, they're one of the few third-party supporters of the Wii U when the Wii U first came out. Like... So they have a good relationship yeah. <laughs> with Nintendo, okay? <laughs> Nintendo's they, like, hey, if you supported the Wii U... They came out with Zombie you're... U, which was like a, a survival horror game for the Wii U at, at launch. They put Assassin's Creed 3 and f 4 on the Wii U. Um, it, just, it, it was just one of the situations where they were putting out games when other third-party developers were not. So. so that's why it's called Starlink, because it's like you got like a character and you like put them in there and then they like link... And it takes and place in space. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I thought that was cool. It's still going to be hampered by the fact that it's a Game to Life game because Ubisoft, that, that that is done. No one's going to buy late. Yeah, they're, they're late to the party with that, on that. 
Uh, next is for uh, For Honor, Marching Fire. Never played For Honor. I think Marching Fire is a dumb name for a DLC expansion. Um, next Marching. we have The Crew 2, which is oh, yeah, a dude. sequel to The Crew. I've been crew, waiting the on crew. The, the Crew 2 for, for a long time. Really? Have you now? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, and then something that I do find interesting <laughs> is Assassin's Creed yes. Odyssey. Of course, which... they saved that for last. They're just ripping off Super Mario, though. Gotta say. Right. Assassin's Creed! That was Creed. my joke earlier. I've been waiting Odyssey. on it. Odyssey! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna kill you! Which is actually funny, because in Assassin's <laughs> Creed 2... In Assassin's Creed 2, Ezio's uncle's name is Mario. Takes place in Italy, okay? His name is Mario, and when he introduces himself, he's like... Don't you recognize me? It's a me, Mario. And he 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 oh doesn't sound like Mario, but right. still, it was definitely a callback to it. Yeah, I think at one point in one of the games too, where you're playing as Ezio, you're trying to save a princess, and she's in like a in like a, a keep, and it says like sorry, but your uh, the um, the achievement slash trophy is sorry, but your princess is in another Castilian. Nice. So. So this is a this is a new game, right? Not an expansion. New game. Um, it will take place in Greece, and when they were showing off the game, I liked how they made it so that you had these massive carvings and sculptures of like the Greek gods just littering the landscape. Now, ancient Greece wasn't like that. It didn't have them everywhere, mm-hmm. but I still think that that is cool as far as like you're gonna see stuff in, in the landscape like that hmm. um not just mount well now i get mountains. why it's called odyssey it yeah because of so why the idiot why, in the odyssey why do they always with the assassin's creed games like are they just out of ideas like why why is it always just hey new location that's gonna make this game cool that's how they've been it's just weird like because it, yeah. it wasn't like that at first right like the first three or four were just kind of it, it didn't center around like where the location was right it was plot but it was mostly like plot uh, well, and then it got to where it was like France, Egypt, so pirates. The first one took place during the Crusades, like in the Middle East. Oh, the second one took place in Italy. Oh, and so then it was the second one had two direct sequels that still took place in Italy. Okay, right. but then three was during the American Revolution. Four was during the the you know Pirates of the Caribbean, basically. Uh, the one after that, Rogue. That was Egypt, right? I no, it was like an Egypt, Rogue, Egypt one. Rogue was more of a spinoff, not really a sequel, but it took place in the nor- Northeast America, but it still had like the pirate feel to it because you had a ship and everything. Um, the next one after that was Unity, which was during the French Revolution. Then you had Syndicate, which took place during Victorian London. Then you had Origins, Ancient Egypt. Okay. And now, so it does jump around different periods of history. It's not really about the location. It's really more about the time in history. Oh, okay. Because the assassins have been, you know, in the game, like, they've been active for a long time. Oh, okay. So, hmm. that's kind of what you should expect whenever you see Assassin's Creed. It's like, oh, well, what, what time in history is this? What interesting time in history is this going to take place mm-hmm. during? So, that's cool. It looks like you've got, um, maybe you'll play a role in the 300 battle. I think that'd be cool. When are we going to get a World War II one? That's the thing. Nazis. I want to kill some Nazis. I would love to see a, just a modern day Assassin's Creed. I guess they made one and called it Watch Dogs, but that's, <laughs> uh, that's neither here nor there. So um, I think it looks interesting. I think a lot of people are roughing it. I do think that they, they've pumped out a lot of Assassin's Creed games, and they did give it a break in 2016 between Syndicate and Origins, they didn't release one. Has it been, like, year bi-yearly or, or every year? It's been almost every year. 2008 and 2016 have been the only years where we haven't gotten a brand new Assassin's Creed. In 2016, they remastered the trilogy of Ezio games, which was Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, and Revelations, and released that. So they did technically release an Assassin's Creed game pretty much every year hmm. so it it does need some room to breathe it is getting a bit stale um so yeah yeah it, people, it looks good people aren't wrong in saying that but honestly it looks pretty good 
I, I just don't like how much more new stuff can you do? It seems they all just look the same to me. Like they're gonna run out of ideas. Like he he sneaks around, he climbs on stuff, he stabs people. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either, Nathan. I don't know either. Okay. 